It stinks to be in the friend zone. Time to wash that off with Tactical Soap. Pheromone infused soap for men, proud channel sponsor of 21 Studios. I'm Anthony Dream Johnson, and I approve this soap. Order now at the link below. Use coupon code 21C for 10% off now. George Bruno with the 21 Report in Orlando, Florida. And we're talking to Alexander Cortez, who just came off stage yes. at the 21 convention. And we're going to talk to him about his message, get some insights for you, and he's going to talk to you specifically <laughs> about his message. What was your experience so far with the 21 convention? It's been really cool. Um, I didn't know what to expect. since I heard about last year through, like through Twitter. I saw that. It looked, I mean, it looked cool. Um, yeah, some of the mutual friends spoke at it. And then Anthony, he asked me, he's like, do you want to speak at this year? I said, yeah, sure, absolutely. I, I, lo I love to speak. Um, and plus, you have to get in front of an audience this way. But you know, the audience, I'm like, okay, is this what, like, what's the vibe of me for guys? And the thing that's impressed me is everybody here is very serious yeah. about the, themselves. Like, they came here to really, like, the, the process of their personal evolution, they, they're taking it, you know, close to their heart. Yeah. Um, it wasn't just a, a meet of, of guys to hear about bro topics. Yeah. You had to phrase it that way. Yeah. It's not a how to get laid conference for four no. days. <laughs> you can exhaust that yeah. topic in about a three hour seminar. You yeah, know, a, presenta a, you know. a presentation. That, that could be fun. It right. Be, you know, fun to get rowdy for an hour right. about that. But uh, yeah, for four days, no, it gets old fast. Yeah. 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 I did notice from last year to this year, some, some of the people that I've seen, uh, there's a few guys that are 100 pounds lighter. They've have oh, become the best versions of themselves. Yeah, there you go. It's yeah. had a positive effect, and I've told many people to pay attention to you because you might flip a switch inside of them and help them become unrecognizable by this time next year, physically, mentally, financially, so forth. I, I had a few guys come up to me. They're on my, my newsletter, actually, that, you know, meeting them in person. They're like, hey, I read your, I got one of your programs, Skinny Fat Manifesto. Like, I've lost 20 pounds, I lost 30 pounds, lost 40 pounds. Which, that's always really cool to hear. Yeah. Um, it's transformative, isn't yeah, it? Well, it is. I mean, I mean it, the thing with, with shedding excess weight is anytime you start, as, as you shed the, the excess parts of yourself physically, that mental excess that you've accumulated, mm -hmm. it, start, it starts to come to the surface. And then mm -hmm. it, it tells you, it points itself out to you, like, okay, what do I need to yeah. uh, you know, get rid of and what do I need to move on from? I mean, that, that's why physical transformation is always really, it's a mental transformation ultimately. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not just, it's not, it's the body, but then, you know, from that, your mind goes through the same process. Mm -hmm. What about your message for the general audience today? What were the nuggets that you can take out of that entire presentation that you did? So, the, 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 meta, the meta message to the presentation was, so with archetypes, you have a story and a script to your life. You have a role that you've you've lived out, and that role comes with a set of characteristics. Maybe you've been a, a father and a husband, maybe you've, you've been a boyfriend, maybe you've been you know, a manager. You've, you have, you have, you've had a title, so to speak, that you've lived, and all, we all have archetypes that we live by, whether we're aware of them or not. If you want to fundamentally change the direction of your life moving forward as a man, you need to approach your masculinity with depth and breadth. There's a lot to it, and that comes down to your script, that comes down to your story. What are the archetypes that are within you? And the, the characteristics I was pointing out is that, yeah, on a very fundamental level, there's there's four main characteristics of men. You have you have leadership of yourself. You have your strength and your being, you know, relative to how you appear in the world. Mm -hmm. You have your mind and your intellect, and then you have your ability to have relationships and to love and to be loved by a woman, be loved back. Um, and then you can attach uh, you know, a physical representation of that you can king, warrior, magician, lover. Um, and th those, uh, the reason why I like to use the, the titles that way, or representations, because those are things that we can pull from history. But those are also things where, when we're talking about the subject of doing deep inner work, mm -hmm. you know, moving beyond sort of the superficial stuff. And mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I'm angry. I've had these realizations. Well, what do I do about it? How do I, how do I really begin affecting change in myself? You can take these things and you can use them as ideals. You can use them as ideals. You can use them as standards. You can use them as values, and you can apply a level and layer of excellence to your life that you, you didn't have otherwise. Yeah, and then with that, as you start living them out, then your story changes, your script changes, your future changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll, you'll change the direction of your life. So you're not them. destined to be one archetype then? No, no. I, the thing I think that many people get trapped in is that we always, 
we always want our past to prove itself into the future. Hmm. If we were this way before, well, we have to keep being that way. Mm-hmm. And well, that's, that's who I was, I was that way then, so maybe that's who I really am. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy to get imposter syndrome when you're going mm-hmm. through changes that, that way. Because you remember, you, know, you remember yourself then, and, well, was that more of the real me? And oftentimes you encounter resistance from people where you're experiencing these things, you're trying to do this for yourself, and they're gonna tell you, well, this isn't really you. Or you know, who you've, I don't like who you've become. And it forces you to re-examine your relationships. Uh, but you know, the, the, how do you overcome that process? Well, you have to have faith that you are that you are. Do you have this within you? you know, I, I made that point. You know, in regards to like you know deep change. It's not that you take elements that they're outside of yourself. And well, I'm going to be that way now. I'm going to be like him. I'm going to be like George. No, you learn from George. You know, look at look at the values that George lives by. But you know, what are your values within yourself? Maybe they maybe they line up. Maybe they are in alignment, and you have commonality that way. Maybe they're a bit different. But it has to be that internal substance that comes out of your own soul and psyche. Uh, when you go through life just trying to borrow from people, then you're just you're a copycat that way. Mm-hmm. You know, you're mimicking. That's a that's a that's like a running joke on, on Twitter. Like the, the Playboy name. Mm-hmm. You know, there's Crypto Playboy and yeah, and, crypt, and Crypto Lambo Lambo Playboy. And there's Miami Playboy and LA yeah. Playboy, and New York Playboy. Yeah. Right? What is unique about you truly? Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, you know, the archetypes are. Would you say that they are things that we name other people or? Do I name myself an archetype? Is that a, like for instance, when I describe myself, there was a time when I described myself as husband, father, stylist, you know, in that order. Uh, And then the husband thing disappeared. (laughs) And then I was just father, stylist. And and I found myself, my titles changing by by default, Mm -hmm. not by design. And I felt at one point in my life, I was no longer in charge of my titles. And then I took that power back. Mm -hmm. How, there's a man out there who knows he needs to change. He doesn't like who he is. He's allowed his circumstances to define him. You know who you are. Speak to that man right now about change and how it's possible. if If you want to change right now, you have titles that were given to you by the people. You were raised in a certain fashion. You were told that you need to believe in certain things. You have had your whole life, you know, maybe presented to you truly where this is what you need to be. This is what you need to be for the family. These are expectations of you. So you have titles and identity laid upon you, um, not at your feet, but literally upon your soul. And maybe that's what you think you are. And you hit, you hit a critical point where you try to be that thing and you try to live that out and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It breaks down. So what does that mean? Well. Does that mean that you just keep the titles and then you act a little bit differently? No, you can, you can take titles off and you can put them on again and you can find new titles. Uh, and, and that's the thing with archetypes, you can find a new story. You know, are you the author of your own script? That's powerful. Who, that's who's very writing, like, powerful. Who's writing that? Who's writing that? If I give you, here's George, here's a script for your life. Here's, here's a script for your life. Well, I really don't like this, uh, you know, the, the second act. Well, you have to follow it because that's what was expected of you. No, you don't because guess what? The, it's not written in pen. It's written in pencil. It has an eraser on it. You can erase that. You can take new paper and you can write out Smart. something else. You, you have that within you and everybody has that within them. The reticence is leaving that first act behind. It's leaving maybe those tiles behind. It's leaving familial expectations behind. Yeah, everybody has those different sets of uh, 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 people. Everybody has those different external desires that get put upon them that you need to be this. It's not about what you need to be for them. What do you need to be for yourself? Who do you want to be? That's a question that you can ask yourself, and that's a question that you can answer. You know, not, not, not me, not, it's not my prescription to you, that's your answer to yourself. And that's where, that's where your personal power is gonna lie. Because once you have that answer, nobody can take that from you. I can't affect a man who knows who he is. I can do everything to him, I can take everything from him, but so long as he says, I am, I am who I am, and no matter what you do to me, you cannot kill my spirit, that's an immortal soul. That can't be stopped. Yeah, but as soon as he says to me, I, I will be what you say, well, then that's somebody that you are living to enslave something else. You are slave to ideals that are not your own. Hmm. Hmm. That's, that's a powerful concept, and I hope you took notes with that. And you know who you are, because this is flipping a switch inside of you that's going to make you unrecognizable this time next year. What else would you say to, let's say, now that, I would say that, would, that was to a, a younger person. Mm-hmm. We have people of all ages at the convention here. Oh, yeah. What would you say to someone 
who's older than you. I find myself, I'm at a point where I have a lot of people looking up to me and respecting me, and a lot of people don't think that I don't reciprocate that. And I learn a lot from people half my age. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to learn that. Yeah. I don't, age doesn't make me almighty. I learn from everyone. I'm a student and a teacher. What would you teach an older man who might be frustrated with the way his life has turned out? I would ask him what, what is within him that he thinks he can teach somebody else. The, the thing that has always struck me with men as, as men age, and they, they have life experience, and they obviously they can speak to, they can speak to wisdom, they have that wisdom, um, and it, it's locked up within them. You need to be a participant um, amongst, you need to be a participant amongst generations. You need to be a participant in the sense that, are you leaving behind a legacy? Not just for the sake of saying, well, I have a legacy, but are you taking what's within you and really refining it and examining it? When you, anytime you're put in a situation where you have to learn something new or you have to teach something, that calls into question your own being and your own sense of understanding. And that's, I think that's why teaching is very satisfactory for people as they age, at least as it seems to me, um, because I watch them teach, and it's not just that they get to pass on, well, here's the lessons I learned. Mm -hmm. They get to constantly rem remake themselves, and they get to understand themselves that much better. You know, and if you're at a point of frustration where, okay, well, what's my life going to turn into? Is there anything that I could teach right now to somebody? And, yeah, and even the process of examination, you can teach yourself, because then you start pouring over your life with that fine-tooth comb and seeing the details and seeing the past and seeing what the future might turn into. And you can spot the patterns for the first time. Uh, when, when, you have no, when you feel like you have nothing to teach people, what are you really saying? Well, you've lost your, own, you've lost your spirit to living. Mm -hmm. you know, like what, what I've learned, what I've done, I guess it's not valuable to anybody. Um, and that's why I think, not that you, a man that must maintain connection to youth, youth all the time, mm -hmm. but you know, even having you know, uh, a student yeah, having a person that you are a mentor to, mm -hmm. that's, that's so critical. And that's something that's really been lost among the current masculine generation mm -hmm. is the idea of having a male mentor. Yeah. Not to be like the man, but to have the man mm -hmm. share with you, here's how I have lived as a man so you can live mm -hmm. as your own man. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's, that is, that's invigorating on a whole different level. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's why I love what I do what I do where I can be extremely sick and snarky at times, but when I actually speak to people one-on-one -on -one or in person or through mm -hmm. email or through text and you know, through phone calls, I have people like, here's my number, call me if you're really struggling with this. Um, what, you know, what am I doing with them? You know, the term we use, well, we're throwing a rope. Yeah, I'm throwing them a rope, but I'm also calling to question myself. And in helping them, I get to help myself as well. Mm -hmm. And now they get the best parts of me. Mm. And that gives me more clarity to I how like I that. should. That gives me more clarity to how I should live my life. I like that. That's why. I'm, that's why. If, you know, as, as, as uh, like I said, as, as a stick as I can be at times, I am very free with my time that way. Mm -hmm. Because it seems that the more of myself I give to people, mm -hmm. the better that things become for me, and the better the work I can do for them. And it's, it's a very positive, um, reciprocating relationship. I think next year, now all these speakers after this year are going to be considered alumni, and you're invited mm -hmm. back next year. Yeah. Next year, you may be invited to speak. You may be invited to just be here and be in the audience, mm -hmm. and someone's going to come up to you and say, something you said sparked something in me. And they're going to show you a picture of when they were 300 pounds and now they're 185. And they're going to say that's because of you. And you never know what seeds you're going to be planting in people. Very true. Do you feel like you planted seeds today with some people? I, I definitely think so. I definitely think so. I got the sense, that even after I got the stage, that I could tell you know, within the eyes of them, and they were pretty, uh, it wasn't just odd, but they, it, they hit something within them that resonated. Yes. You know, and if you can give somebody that the, the, that key, so to speak, yeah. or you show you show them where the door is in the maze, yeah, or you show them the path through it, sure. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I would I would like to hope there's there'll be some profound change that occurs within some of them for mm -hmm. sure. Where do you see yourself in five years? What do you think? <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, so the, the funny thing I always cross back doing ballet, which I'm always going to do. Uh, but I, I imagine at that point I'll, I definitely want to have like one or two books out. Mm -hmm. um, and just expanding the reach mm -hmm. in terms of the, the number of men I get to interact with. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny too, I have a lot of women to interact with as well, but the primary audience is, is young men. Yeah, young, young men to older men. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely, there's a, there's a void now in the, in the world, in the society, where like I said, men need mentors. Mm -hmm. So if, if, you, if I can just continue to serve that role on a larger mm -hmm. scale, I know I'm doing something good. Mm -hmm. What is the best way for someone to access your content? Where can they go? Mm. So best way, um, so my website, uh, which I don't really, I don't blog much, I, I email, so it's, it, 
the other website, Alexander Juan Antonio Cortez. Alexander Juan Antonio Cortez. Yeah, with dot com. Yeah, dot com. Mm -hmm. There's a contact page. It's mm -hmm. also on my Twitter, AJA underscore Cortez. Okay. The contact page is there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I write a daily newsletter, or mm -hmm. almost daily. The newsletter is that's where all the in depth, super deep content is mm -hmm. masculinity, relationships. Dealing with toxic, dealing with toxic people, physical transformation, mental transformation, uh, fat loss. Yeah, you know, how to work out, how mm -hmm. to train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these metaphors that we use of you know, you know pr pushing yourself forward, pulling yeah. yourself back. Um, everything's on the on the email list, and that, that's essentially where I've written the content for like the, you know the, the books, uh, the, or at least the next book definitely is coming out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, that's also where I answer questions. So people that you have sincere questions, send me an email. Yeah, you know, reply to one of those emails, and you know, hopefully we can talk about that. You know, and like you know, in a Q and A, or maybe it'll be a subject I can expound into, and you know, that, that gives me a pulse too. It's what people mm -hmm. need and want, and like I said, it also teaches me about myself. Right? Okay, like here's, you know, I'll, I'll get challenged with things at times. Like, mm -hmm. hey, let me really think about this mm. um, in regards to you know, relationship I like questions that. or physical questions. So, are you a king, a warrior, a magician, or a lover? Those are the four archetypes. Those are right? yeah, those are the four archetypes of masculine soul. The ma of the masculine soul. What do you want to be? That's what I got out of this. And that you can change your script anytime. This is George Bruno from the 21 Report saying thank you to Alexander. Thank you, George. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Adios, Thanks. gentlemen. Take care.